Who wins? Could be Connor. You know what? Um, I don't want to play defense. I know y'all don't want to hear that. Um, these guys are each other's kryptonite. If Khabib can clobber and pressure, you know, Conor McGregor on a full camp, Chad Mendez had half the reach and didn't have a full camp, and he was able to do it. But the timing of Conor McGregor, I mean, he might be one of the best at that in the game. So I think if Khabib comes forward with his head wide open for some straight lefts, he might get lit up. So it really depends on who closes the gap the best, and it's going to be early. If Khabib starts pressuring him in the first round and have success, that's the fight. Sure. If Conor can catch him and slip him, we might see him getting TKO. So if I had to flip a coin, I would probably say Khabib, just because I think Khabib will deal with the emotion. A lot of guys lose to Conor because they can't deal with the emotional. He's going to mentally try to brainwash him, get into their head. Um, I think Khabib will be strong enough mentally not to allow that to happen, and he'll stick to the game plan. Nice. And we're hearing a lot of talk about what's next. I mean, we, that we, everybody wants to know. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of the TJ Dillashaw name being thrown out there. Give us, give us the update. Break, break some news. What's happening? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I believe he wants to fight me from what he's, uh, you know, has, has said it, uh, from what he has said to the media. Uh, I want to fight him. The UFC wants to fight. Now it's just time to negotiate and to, uh, to see what weight class we're going to do it at. Like I, I gave him the option, either 25 or 35. It doesn't, it doesn't matter for me. I want to super fight. I'll, I'll, at 25, I'll knock him out. So if he wants to come down, you're gonna get knocked out at 125 pounds. 35, 35. I'm taking a little risk, but 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 I but I, but I, I still believe I could beat him. You know, 25, he's gonna he's gonna be depleted, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna take advantage of that. One can make the argument that uh, DJ deserves an immediate rematch on account of what, what he's accomplished in the UFC. What do you think? I mean, who do you think is most deserving to face him? Man, but this is uh, absolutely does does Demetrius Johnson deserves the rematch. I, I, uh, when it comes to what he's done, absolutely. But I, I know Demetrius is also hurt. He's still recovered from his injuries. If I don't fight TJ, I want DJ next. But the the reason why I want to fight TJ was just because it's a super fight. Because I'm saying I'll go up or you come down, but we can fight. It's not about a, a year of, of talking, a year and a half of talking that such and such is going to happen. I'm saying let's let's score down now. I. I I felt like they had overlooked me with Demetrius Johnson uh, uh, in my fight against Demetrius, and they were always trying to get the super fight with TJ and, and DJ, and I'm just like, you know what, I won. Give me the fight. I, f I feel like it's deserving. Demetrius Johnson can heal up, and, and, and I'll fight him next. You know, the best percentage hand of taking my title is actually me going out there and having that perfect fight. Um, that's when I'm going to retire. I've said it all along. I'm not going to retire because of somebody beat me. I'm not going to retire because I get old. I'm not going to let myself get to that point. I'm going to retire when I feel like I held nothing back, no hesitation. I had that picture-perfect fight, and at that moment, I'll know. 
And no matter how much money is left in the sport, no matter what somebody's trying to do to bring me back in, no matter how easy or hard or whatever the matchup is, I will peacefully walk away and I will never return. That's when I was going to do it. And I just, you know, that's why I said I'm really just coming into my stride. Like, you've seen me, my first five fights is all submission. First, I mean, my first five professional fights, sorry, were all via submission. Then I had a few matches where I was kind of grinding guys out. Then I had some knockouts. Then I had some slow strategic matches. Then I had some knockouts. Then I had a few losses. So I've kind of shown everything. I, I just can't wait to that moment where I can just be so free in the octagon where I put everything together. And when I do that, you know, that would that'd be my um, mic drop and walk off. So, so Tyron, it's hard for me to believe that you don't feel that way about this performance this last weekend because from the outside perspective, I mean, it looked like a pretty flawless performance against a notable contender, and um, you looked great. So what more is it going to take? Is it just a way that you are going to feel in there, or is it something that we're going to be able to pick up on if we're watching you and we're going to say, like, man, this is t- he's, he's looking perfect. This might be the fight that he mic drops his retirement. You know, to, that that fight to date, to me, felt like um, I had a few of some other mistakes. Um, I really felt good. I really felt light. You know, it was nothing that I really felt like I hesitated on. Um, but I didn't feel that feeling. I, I'll know that feeling. I, I visualized it. I dreamt about it. When I had that feeling, I'm like, that's it. I, I'll know it. And um, I just don't feel like it's going to be anytime soon. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight until I'm like 45. But you know. I don't think I'm going to be retiring the next four or five fights either. Um, listen, I, I think he's a fantastic fighter. I, I still think that that was probably wasn't the best of his performances. I, I think it, it took him a little while to get into his rhythm. And, and certainly, you know, getting a, a fight like that on, on relatively short notice, I think, might have thrown him off a little bit. And Brandon Davis is, is very tough, and he really didn't yeah. have a whole lot to lose in that fight. Uh, but for Zabit, I mean, uh, he continues to impress, and, and he's consistent, he's winning, uh, and it was a good win. And it wasn't a perfect performance, and you're right, it left him open to people suggesting that he's overrated. I think that sort of lacks respect for Brandon Davis in some respects, and I also just think that maybe, you know, he isn't quite ready for Chad Mendez. I mean, that seems to be the name that he keeps coming back to if Yair Rodriguez mm. is not ready. I, I don't know what will happen. I think they want to make that Sabit Yair fight, but uh, if all of a sudden it's Chad Mendez, who is, you know, perennial number one or two guy, we'll see where Zabit is at. But uh, certainly you're always excited to see his name on the fight card. BJ Penny's back. That's cool. I mean, kind of. I mean, look, I'm a fan of BJ Penn. I don't know. Um, he didn't look the best in his last couple performances. Um, but he's not like BJ's a legend. He's very rich. He doesn't need to fight. He wants to fight, right? This isn't like, I don't feel bad for a guy who's like, He's a little bit older in his career. He's like, dude, I want to fucking fight. I'm assuming BJ's doing extremely well. He was rich, I believe, before he got into the sport. That was always the rumor about BJ Penn. I'm a fan of BJ Penn. I'm just not a fan of this fight. Although this is a fight that he should win. Who's he fighting again? What's his name? He's the uh, Ryan submission Hall. guy. Ryan Hall. Yeah, Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall. <laughs> so Ryan Hall's predominantly a submission guy. Uh, not really a heavy striker. Uh, listen. You, you're right, Lewis. BJ comes from, uh, and he, he wouldn't mind me saying this. There's nothing wrong with saying this. He comes from a, a, a pretty wealthy family in, uh, in in Hawaii. They own a lot of land there on Hilo. Uh, by all accounts, that's what I've led to believe. Obviously, I haven't audited his family's fucking accounts, but that's what I hear. I hear it's from uh, a, a wealthy family. Uh, and that was prior to being in the UFC, but the guy likes to fight. He is a born fighter. BJ is a natural fighter. Uh, my coach, Jason Perillo and BJ Penn, they have a lot of history there. And the fact that BJ, as as we just said, comes from a family, you know, that, that that's, you know, they have financial backing. He's got business endeavors that are doing very well. And he's still going to come back and fight. You know, you got to take your hat off to him. Mm. Is it the right thing? Who knows? You know, have we seen the best BJ Penn in the past? Probably, you know. But the fact that he is such... And I mean this um, not condescendingly, but such a warrior, such a true fighter, wants to go out there and fight. You got to respect that.